So good morning, good afternoon and good evening everyone and uh, greetings from a very hot Geneva. I'm sad not to be there with you in presence, but I'm pleased to have the opportunity to present the results of our work on behalf of the WHO team. I have no conflict of interest to disclose. So characterizing uh, the clinical features of COVID-19 in people living with HIV is important to inform optimal public health response, particularly as SARS-CoV-2 vaccination coverage is low in the African region. And the extremely low vaccination coverage is concerning because in Africa there is the highest burden of HIV infections and there is mounting evidence suggesting that people living with HIV have an increased risk of uh, poor COVID-19 outcomes, potentially due to immune depression or immune dysregulation associated with HIV infection or higher prevalence of underlying conditions. Importantly, there are still knowledge gaps um, on the impact of viral load, CD4 cell count, vaccination, natural immunity, and variants on uh, COVID-19 outcome in people living with HIV. So the important question is whether HIV infection is an independent risk factor for mortality due to COVID-19. And the evidence so far um, has not been always consistently reported across studies. So of the 13 systematic reviews and meta-analysis published so far, eight reported increased risk uh, of uh, mortality among people living with HIV, while five reported not difference in risk compared to the HIV negative population. So last year, uh, at, at this conference, um, I had the privilege to present the preliminary finding from the WHO Global Clinical Platform for COVID-19, and we showed that people living with HIV have a 30% increased risk of dying once hospitalized for COVID-19. And today I'm thrilled to present the updated analysis of our work. As of March, um, since March 2020, WHO has been uh, gathering, collecting um, anonymized individual level clinical data of patients hospitalized with COVID-19 around the globe using standardized case report form through an electronic clinical platform called WHO Global Clinical Platform for COVID-19. So for this analysis, um, the study populations um, uh, includes about 363,000 people hospitalized between 2020 and May 2022 from 42 countries. Of those, over 29,000 were people living with HIV, uh, most of them living in the African region. So leveraging the WHO clinical platform data I just presented, we aim to address um, some important research questions. Number one, what is the clinical manifestation and pattern presentation of people living with HIV with hospitalized with COVID? Number two, is HIV infection an independent risk factor for in-hospital mortality? Number three, what are the risk factors for in-hospital mortality in people living with HIV and do viral load and CD4 cell count play a role in influencing the outcome? And number four, what is the association between um, COVID-19 variants and uh, mortality by HIV status? We uh, did a multivariate regression analysis uh, to determine risk factor for 29 um, days in hospital mortality. Uh, the models were adjusted for clustering at the country level and other covariates and record with missing informations were um, excluded when determining the distributions. So moving to the first question about the clinical presentation, our observation is that in general, uh, the frequency of all the classic COVID-19 symptoms uh, were significantly more frequent uh, among people living with HIV. And the only symptom that was less frequent in this population was cough. We also, uh, the second observation is that three out of five people living with HIV hospitalized with COVID had underlying conditions. So all underlying conditions, but hypertension and diabetes were more frequent in people living with HIV than in HIV negative population. Now moving to down the second research question, is HIV infection um, associated with an increased risk for in hospital mortality? So our regression uh, model suggests that uh, HIV infection indeed is an independent risk factor for in-hospital mortality and that people living with HIV have a 51% greater risk of dying compared to HIV negative population. Now by grouping people living with HIV by CD4 cell categories and viral load, 
we observe that people with low CD4 cell count, uh, regardless of their viral load status, uh, seems to have a higher risk of death. And in fact, among people immunocompromised with uncontrolled viral load, the mortality risk was 100% greater compared to HIV negative individuals. Now, moving to the third question about uh, risk factor for in-hospital mortality among people living with HIV, uh, our regression model found that older age, CD4 less than 200 cells, chronic kidney disease, hypertension, and diabetes were independent risk factor for in-hospital mortality in people living with HIV. And of note, viral load and gender did not seem to influence the outcome. Now, moving to the fifth question about association between time, COVID-19 variants, and mortality by HIV status. The orange bar show in this slide uh, indicate mortality uh, in people living with HIV, and the blue bar indicate mortality in HIV-negative populations. And we found that while mortality remained relatively stable between 2020 and 2021 in both groups, there was a significant attenuation in mortality in 2022 again in both groups. However, while the attenuation was uh, large and significant in the HIV negative population, uh, the attenuation was much more modest, albeit significant, in people living with HIV. So what are the reasons for this um, difference? Well, it can be due to a differential effect of vaccination in the subpopulation or can be due to a, vaccination, a differential effect of variants. On the, in the, on the two populations. And indeed, we explored this um, last uh, 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 hypothesis. And so we compare mortality in, the, in two windows periods where Omicron variant and Delta variant were overwhelmingly um, prevalent in South Africa. And we observed an absolute reduction in mortality in the Omicron period of 13% in the HIV negative population and the reduction was only 4.8% in the H, you know, HIV positive people, you know, people living with HIV. So while Omicron seems to be less severe in immunocompetent people, this reduced virulence of the virus was only modest um, among people living with HIV. So our study has several limitations. Most of the data come from South Africa. Um, important uh, vari variable uh, such as BMA, such as uh, vaccine information, reinfection information, or variant information by individual level patient were not available. So in conclusion, uh, COVID-19 classic symptoms uh, and underlying conditions were uh, more frequent among people living with HIV. Um, independent risk factor for in hospital mortality among people living with HIV were older age, chronic kidney disease, diabetes, hypertension, and CD4 cell count. The important decrease in mortality observed during the Omicron period uh, for HIV negative individuals was far more modest among people living with HIV. So clearly, we need to do a better job to prioritize uh, SARS CoV 2 vaccination and other pharmacological intervention in people living with HIV, also considering that viral load coverage at the moment is still unacceptably low in, in the African region. And also we need to do a better job to minimizing the risk of exposure to SARS-CoV-2 um, uh, among people living with HIV, and we need to monitor individuals that are infected, especially those with advanced HIV disease and those with comorbidities, and we need to ensure uninterrupted HIV treatment. And with this, I would like to conclude and thank very much all the patients, institutions and networks that contributed to this data, to the WHO clinical platform. I would like to thank the WHO team in Geneva and uh, uh, in their regional offices. I would like to thank colleagues in South Africa who contributed greatly, um, a great data set. And as, lastly, uh, the WHO uh, advisory group. Thank you very much.